Welcome along guys. Well, we've got a rare break in the weather and we actually have a dry day. Yes, get the flags out. This is the first dry day in about three weeks and I've managed to get my hands on, thanks to Destination Triumph, the beautiful Triumph Speed Twin. Now this is the bike which has the Thruxton engine in the more Bonneville styled machine. So you know, most people would think I'm not really a retro kind of, kind of guy. The only retro thing I've got in my house is my 70s duvet. But you never know, this black beauty could change all that. Let's go for a spin. <laughs> This, I forgot to mention, this one also has the optional Valence and Heinz end cans on. So we're actually going to get a bit of volume out of this. <laughs> it sounds beautiful. And I've been told they do a lovely little burble as well. So looking forward to hearing that. I've got my external audio recorder in, so you should be able to enjoy the beautiful music this bike makes. Oh, it's got some punch. I can tell straight away it's got some punch. Don't think this is a boring old slow retro. I mean, I know I'm not a man. Whoa! <laughs> the wheelie control's kicking in. <laughs> the wheelie control was kicking in then. I really wasn't expecting it to pull like that. Wow! That engine, it is a 8 valve parallel twin, a 270 degree crank, so it's sort of I think like a cross plane crank configuration. Oh, it's got so much punch at the bottom, so much initial punch from this engine. I think maximum torque on this bike is 112 newton meters of torque, but it makes all of that I think at 5,000 revs, so it's actually Considering it red lines at 7,000, 5,000 revs is actually quite high up the rev band. So one would think actually it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an engine that actually keeps on pulling to the red line. We will see. It makes 97, I believe, brake horsepower and like I say 112 newton meters of torque for a 1200. So it's obviously, it's not on the brink of high performance engines with that power output to capacity. But what that does give you is just bags and bags of usable torque. The pegs actually feel quite high and a little bit further back than I would have thought. A bit of a sporty position, actually. You're certainly not sat in an armchair on this. You've got some sportiness. The seat is nice and plush. Plenty of padding. The bars are upright, pretty wide. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a comfortable place to be, this. You are very upright, you are very much sat on your backside, so all of your weight is on your, on your bottom. And I do suffer a little bit with a sore bum, I'm not sure I've mentioned that. But in this position, I think I will find this uncomfortable after an hour plus on this. I prefer a little bit of weight on my wrists to take a little bit off my bottom, but that is just personal preference. It's a very comfortable position, zero weight on your wrists at all. The only weight on your wrists is when you open it up and it tries to escape. Jesus, you've got to hold on. <laughs> when you crack that throttle at low RPMs, you have got to hold on. So that engine has been lifted directly out of the Thruxton, which is the, the calf racer, sporty, retro-inspired, uh, naked, well, it's not even a naked, it's got a cowl, isn't it? So it's the, it's the 60s, 70s inspired retro that Triumph made. This is the same engine, so this is basically like a more comfortable Thruxton. If that, if those low clip-ons of the Thruxton and that aggressive seating position of the Thruxton are not your cup of tea, but you fancy the 1200 motor, this is where this comes in. Basically, a comfortable Bonneville-inspired retro with that lovely Thruxton motor, and it is a peach. The seat height is actually lower than the Thruxton. It's 807 millimetres, so not quite a, a low bike, really. So if you are a little bit... Uh, <laughs> a bit too, pushing it a bit too much there. If you are a little bit more vertically challenged, you will find this easier to get on and off of than the Thruxton. 
it's definitely a bike which the shorter rider can enjoy not just the tallies I like this bit of road because it's got some real mixture of tarmac and this is very very bumpy around here because this suspension on here the forks are conventional way up forks and they're also completely non-adjustable so it'd be interesting to see how they handle what the bump management is like on them and actually you know what for a bike which really isn't claiming to be particularly sporty those forks seem incredibly well set up the rear shocks are two twin retro type you know rear shocks on this I'll show you them properly on the walk around they are adjustable for preload and at the moment they're in the softest position so with my 18 stone on the on the bike I'm probably pushing the rear suspension a bit too much and I can feel it, it does feel a little bit bouncy at the rear I could probably do with whacking up that preload you've got beautiful conventional styled dials which I really like on this style of bike I do love an analog rev counter I'm, I'm a sucker for an analog rev counter there's very few digital TFT rev counters that I prefer to an old-fashioned analog needle there's just something special about an analog needle bouncing off the red line that you just can't reproduce electronically so I do like these retro clocks they're lovely brushed aluminium finish with sort of triumph detailing on them very nice indeed with just a simple LCD at the bottom with your with your trip and your speed and your and your fuel gauge I it's got a fuel gauge and they'll count there miles till empty 99 miles so I'm a bit of a sucker for some old-fashioned gauges and I think this bike deserves to have an old-fashioned gauge like this gauges it really goes with the styling so this is a really bumpy bit of road down here let's see how the suspension copes it's, it's quite compliant I think it's definitely on the the softer side it's handling those bumps actually rather well I think it is more soft we'll see how it handles because it definitely seems it's a little bit more set for comfort than handling maybe but that you know that surprises me because this bike does have the Rosso Corsa three tires on so it's got a very sporty intermediate tire I'd say it's obviously it's not the super courses but the Rosso courses are actually quite a soft sticky tire so we'll wait till we get it around the favorite twisty bits and we'll see how she handles it's quick it is fast this is no old slow retro that's a quick bike that could shock some uh, more modern looking machinery that's for sure it's, it's got a real get up and go feel to riding it it's bringing out my hooligan side I never would have thought a retro bike could got the indicator on still I never would have thought a retro bike would bring out my hooligan side but this is it's that engine it's the sound of that engine with those pipes and it's that instant grunt it delivers oh it's a bit of a weapon actually that engine okay favourite little bit of twisty road let's see what we can see about it it's not a bike to hang off of obviously stay in your seat ground clearance seems pretty the suspension's pretty good actually changes direction pretty quickly it's, a, it's bouncing me around a little bit it does dive a little bit on the brakes which are Brembo by the way but yeah it's, it's good enough it's good enough to bring smiles to your face and have some fun on it's certainly not a bike just for the granddads oh no <laughs> oh dear yeah it's good it's very good it feels a lot even though it's 197 kilos dry it doesn't really feel like it it doesn't feel super sharp obviously all the geometry isn't set up to make it super st sharp steering but there's enough there to keep you entertained when you want to push on I could certainly live with that to satisfy my inner hooligan well, I've got, I've got more of an outer hooligan than an inner hooligan, let's be honest. The brakes are also very sharp, very sharp. Dual four-pot Brembo front brakes. 
You do get a bit of fork dive though. I think your braking is only limited by the fork dive, but it's still fantastic. So much grunt. Oh, we're going in quite tight. Oh, it's nice to have some semi-dry roads. It's, it gets, when you're over, the suspension does get a little bit wallowy, perhaps. On that dry line. I love that tour, I love that pull out the corners. Yeah, as, as you work it right round the rev band, woo! As you work it right round the rev band, it does sort of run out of puff at the top, so it's definitely a motor to to use the torque off. It's not got that top end rush, it, it fades away a little bit, so put it in a higher gear and use that incredible amount of grunt. The mirrors are fantastic. Triumph have absolutely nailed the bar end mirror market. They're super stable. They're not vibrating. Perfect vision behind you. It looks so much nicer with this bar end style than conventional round Mickey Mouse mirrors. I don't know why more manufacturers just don't do bar ends as standard now. That they're brilliant. I'm getting a tiny amount of vibrations through the bars, but certainly not extreme. Nothing really through the foot pegs. A little bit as the revs increase, I guess. A little bit through the seat as the revs increase as well. But nothing to worry about. Nothing to cause you a problem. Because it's completely naked, as you sort of go out over 60 or 70, it gets a bit windy. It's definitely more of a, an under 60 bike, I would say. As you go over sort of the, the 60, 70 mark, the performance starts to die off a little bit. I think around sort of the 30, 40, 50 is where the bike really shines through with that engine. Let's, let's do a bit of a roll on test. So 30 miles an hour, fourth gear, 2000 revs. 60 miles an hour. That's not bad at all. Taking the motor right down, let's, let's take it right down. That's from idle. That is literally on tick over now. Below 2,000 revs, it's a little bit chunky, but anything over 2,000 revs, 2,000 revs, anything over 2,000 is absolutely usable. So that's not bad at all for a, a parallel twin to have usable power from 2,000 revs. Oh dear, it's a dead deer. I'll get that on the back. A bit of venison, venison burgers for tea. Okay, let's pull into the pub. <laughs> I'd do a quick little walk around. You know, I like to do a walk around in a pub. What pub's this? The White Horse. Let's pull into the White Horse. Nice and easy to find neutral gearbox. It's beautiful, actually. Right, first little annoyance. The kickstand. It's quite difficult to get your, your boot round. This is all right, isn't it? I like it here. Good place to stop for a ride, I reckon. Nice road round here as well. This is, a, this is a great road for riding up here. It's a cut through between Petersfield and uh, Chichester. So a few people asking whereabouts this was. But anyway, enough of that. Look at this. So there it is, the Speed Twin. I guess the main thing about the bike is that massive parallel twin motor. Looks lovely, sounds lovely, goes lovely. This one does have a couple of Triumph optional extras. The Valance and Heinz exhausts, delicious. These little black, blacked out intake metal pieces here, whatever you want to call those. I guess they're just the throttle body covers. It also has these optional LED indicators as well, but blacked out with the chrome to finish the look. Looks fairly nice. It's a halogen headlight, but with some LED running lights. If we go to full beam, you can see it's actually a, a halogen bulb in there, but with some LED running lights. Proper aluminium front mudguard. LED tail light, again, with aluminium mudguard. Leather seat. Nice, comfortable seat with the little stitching. I don't think it's actually leather. I think it's pleather. I don't think it's real leather. Is it raining? 
as I mentioned the rear suspension is only adjustable for preload so you've just got like the push around clicker to increase the preload and it's on the softest setting at the moment so that could do with a bit more if it was mine I'd whack a bit more on the rear there the paintwork is just lovely that is just there's look at the I don't know if it won't come out on the camera but that paint is just so it's not a no orange peel that is a beautiful finish on that absolutely beautiful finish on that black switch gear is actually the slightly different style to the recent triumphs I've seen I think this is more in line with the Bonneville switch gear nice little detailing with the speed twin on the top clamps there and those beautiful conventional clocks which I've got a lot of time for let's just just let's see them in action let's see them sweeping yeah they're they're nice that's on a, on a, on a retro styled bike like this that's what you want to see that's about it really to look at so let's jump back on and do a few more miles so the bike is quite basic the knees start at 10.7 so it's a reasonable price but they are quite basic I mean there's no cruise control doesn't appear to be any heated grips standard could be optional but they're not standard you know it's, it's not got all the bells and whistles but it's functional that is the thing it's a functional bike I mean it's got a fuel gauge brilliant it's got miles to empty it's got trips you know but it's not brimming with tech which I quite like I mean it's got traction control which you could turn on and off so it's got the basics for a new bike you'd call it the basics good news about that motor it will do 10,000 miles between services and a valve check is only at 20,000 miles so it's a pretty maintenance free motor it'll also do 59 miles per gallon which isn't half bad 60 miles an hour we're doing just over 3,000 revs if we push it to 70 it's just under 4,000 revs so you could cruise all day at 70 no problem whatsoever going over 70 you're going to be restricted anyway due to the wind blast but you could probably cruise at 80 if you just wanted to push it a little bit and you wanted to get somewhere in a hurry because this is the thruxton frame i've noticed that the steering lock isn't that good it's not a brilliant steering lock it's sort of like tuono style steering lock which has surprised me i would have thought you'd have a bit more lock on a bike like this but so be it so for me the highlights of this bike is the engine absolutely 100 percent the engine probably the engine and the the fit and finish would be the top things about it a few little niggles the side stand the nipple's not big enough i like a bigger nipple <laughs> it's quite hard to get the side stand down um, very little else I don't like apart from it's a bit basic but that's really reflected in the price 10,700 is not a lot of money these days other bad points well the suspension is a little bit soft but you want comfort on this sort of bike you don't want it rock hard I think if you want something sporty then you get the Thruxton the whole point of this bike is, a, is it so it's a more comfortable Thruxton and that's exactly what it is it does what it says on the tin so there we go a very quick look at the speed twin while it's not raining <laughs> oh yeah that cloud looks a bit ominous massive thank you to destination triumph for, for dropping this down to me for loaning me this i think the next thing's going to probably be the triumph rs the rs thruxton they are just i think i think they have just taken delivery of the first of the RS Thruxton so that will be the next bike I'm on so I'm just praying we're going to get a bit more dry with us so we can actually throw that around a bit see what those RS credentials are like every other RS I've ridden from Triumph I've absolutely loved that just leaves me to say ride safe take care hopefully this big ball of fire will remain in the sky for a little bit longer <laughs> so we can get out and ride a few more bikes but I doubt it see you later guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> Oh, shit.
down here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Welcome along guys. Well, we've had a rare break in the weather and the sun has just come out. I think this is the first dry day we've had in about, oh, Mr. Royal Mailman wants to come in here now. Very inconvenient of him. I'm doing an intro here, don't you know? 